Hello and welcome. My name is Kathy A. And today I thought I'd talk about some of my February favorites and flops. As there were a few. <laughs> um, first of all, I wanted to say hello to uh, my friends Jane and Liz. Um, I got to meet up with them in early February. I had not seen them since 1976, uh, a little after graduation day. And um, it has been, what, 40 something years since then. <laughs> so it's, it's really cool. This is a picture that the three of us, as we were like best friends, um, we had one taken in our junior year going into our senior year uh, at, I think it was Caldor's, we had this taken. And then we recreated it when we met up this past uh, month. And also the Jane Iredell event uh, with my friend Corinne. She was such a good sport and uh, we weren't actually too happy with the makeover that we had and I think we both preferred the makeup that we normally do on ourselves. And uh, But it was an interesting experience and there actually are a few products in my favorites uh, this month that came from that particular event. So let's start it off with um, one of my favorites from the month and that was the Makeup Revolution. This is the uh, Ultra Eye Contour Palette and yes it does look familiar. It looks exactly like the Kat Von D um, Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette and it's pretty close. You know it's not quite as creamy, it's not quite as pigmented, but you know what it's so close for less than a third of the price. Um, I really like it from Makeup Revolution. Um, for my birthday, I had a birthday on February 21st and uh, 59. Um, my husband gave me a Sephora card so I went and got the um, I had seen so many people talk about this and say they loved it, so I had to get it. This is the uh, Give Me Some Nude Lip uh, from Sephora. It's a collection of different high-end uh, lip products. And I can tell you, I absolutely hated most of it. It was just brown, 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 dark brown, and there was an Estee Lauder item in there. Of course, I'm not a big fan of Estee Lauder, as you know. So liner, very, very dark. So, you know, giving me some new lip is not just fish belly white girls like me. So this is a kind of a broad spectrum of shades of nudes. Um, I like the idea of it, but I actually did not enjoy most of it. This is the Bite lipstick, and it just, it looked like nothing on me. It was just blah, I looked dead. And I'm a nude lipstick lover, so... Uh, from Urban Decay. This is a full-size Urban Decay Vice lipstick. I did not like this color at all. Absolutely. It looked like I, I put mud on my lips. Um, so yeah. Um, I think one of my favorites in the bunch was the Marc Jacobs. And this is called Slow Burn. And Slow Burn actually is a, a fairly pretty color. It's got a little bit of a mauve tone to it. And uh, I like the formulation of this one. This one seemed to be one of the two I liked in the group. So this is Slow, slow Burn. From Too Faced, the Melted Matte Collection. They put in um, Melted... Queen Bee. This is called Queen Bee. And um, it wasn't bad, actually. It's very similar to the Marc Jacobs. I always find it to be a little bit drying. Now this is slightly lighter and a slightly cooler tone than the Marc Jacobs. And you have to let it situate on your lips for a few minutes. Um, it does last a while, but I'm, you know, but the Marc Jacobs and the Too Faced are the only two things out of this whole set that I liked. And I, I love the packaging. I use the packaging for um, holding brushes and things like that. The last item in this is Buxom's White Russian. And a lot of people rave about this. And 
I must be the only one that doesn't like it, but I don't like it. Um, and it's not because of the peppermint thing. It's got a strong peppermint thing so that it'll plump your lips up, which Buxom is famous for that. This is their most famous shade, so I'm probably standing alone in the corner here. Um, you can't really wear this on its own because it just looks like your lips with a white sheen on them. And if you put it over the top of something, it does lighten it up and it does plump your lips up. And I think that's the attraction of it. But I didn't think it was any more special than any other like Wet n Wild light shade that's similar to this. Uh, the plumping thing is nice. I mean, it does give you a little bit of plumping. So, yeah, I, I don't hate it, but I don't see going gaga over it or, or buying the full size of it because of this. So, this kit was kind of a fail for me, and it's going to go back because I'd rather get something else that I really like. This is brand new, and I forget who I saw uh, reviewing this. Uh, this is one of those YouTube maybe buy it things. This is such a beautiful bottle, and this is from Physicians Formula, and it's a new um, hydration system. You shake it up push the pump down and it's a dropper. Put a couple drops in and you have a choice. You can put them into your um, moisturizer and dab them on your face or you can add them to your primer and put them on your face with your primer. They remind me it's a strong scent and it reminds me of the um, rosehip oil that I got because of um, Lil Poet. Susan, she, she always gets me to buy these things. She also got me to buy the Manuka Honey Eye Cream, <laughs> which I like too. Um, both of these items from um, TJ Maxx, the uh, rosehip oil and the uh, Manuka Eye Cream. Manuka Honey is supposed to have a whole bunch of different um, really nice uh, emollient kind of factors to them. I'm getting a lot of heavy lines under my eyes lately and um, I am starting to think more about eye creams and things like that. These are three different eye powders. Uh, they're brightening under eye powders, face powders, and they come, this is a trio which I got at Sephora and I, I'd recommend this to anyone. There's a light pink powder which is very brightening. I don't know if you can see that in there. It's extremely brightening and it's so um, finely milled that it does not show under your eyes, but it does brighten because of the color. And even more of a surprise is the purple one. You would think, oh, purple, what am I going to use purple for? <laughs> you know? um, this is the purple one. You can see that. You can actually see that it is very brightening. I'm going to put that right here. And you can see under my eye here. I'm just going to take my ring finger. It brightens up your face. These both are very beautiful. And the third one that comes in here is just a kind of a, a light. Um, skin tone color, a very light skin tone color, and that is very nice for going over around the nose or wherever you would need a general face powder. I love these. I think they're, they're wonderful. I think my favorites are the pink and the purple, though. I think that those two um, really are worth trying, and uh, it was outside my comfort zone to try a purple powder on my face, but it doesn't show up as purple, and the pink doesn't show up as pink. It just brightens your skin, and especially when you get very sallow, kind of sunken, fading out kind of skin that we get as we get older, um, it's really nice to have that brightening effect. A huge disappointment, and this is a YouTube made me buy it. Everybody's been talking about the fact that Paula's Choice discontinued all their foundations and came out with one. One foundation for Paula's Choice, and any of you who know Paula's Choice know that the Beautypedia uh, was started by her. Paula Begone, she, um, she was the cosmetic cop back in the late 70s, early 80s. She came out with Don't Go to the Cosmetic Counter Without Me. She came out with all those books. 
and she would rip apart all of the high-end lines and everything and just tell it like it was. This has this in it, it's bad for your skin, this has that. She was um, a pioneer, a breakthrough pioneer in um, kind of researching cosmetic ingredients. And I always admired her and I had all her books. She stopped writing the books and she got her own company and then she started her own line of skin care and cosmetics. Um, very limited in the cosmetic area. She did um, a collaboration with Wayne Goss on an eye palette that I think was probably one of the worst eye palettes I've ever bought. Um, and she has a lot of skin care that people really enjoy. So when she came out with a foundation, since she's so picky about everybody else's foundation, I figured this has got to be liquid gold. This has got to be something when I put it on my face, I am just going to look like I'm, you know, queen of the world. Well, <laughs> this is the anti-aging serum foundation, and I have, um, and it's a matte. So the word matte and the word anti-aging don't generally go together, if you know what I mean. It's usually a hydrating kind of thing. This is, it's a serum bottle. I always shake any bottle or two. And put that out and it's a very liquidy runny um, foundation very yellow toned but my big test with a foundation is I usually put it right in here because I have a lot of wrinkles and crinkles in there and I figure how um, a foundation reacts to that area will be how it, it reacts to dry patches on my skin you can see how yellow this is. There was there were not a lot of shades and when this dried I could see every little flake and fiber that was in this product. It was it's one of the worst foundations I've ever used and it's matte. I looked like cupcake frosting. It was just terrible yellow cupcake frosting. So Paula's choice, Miss Snobby, <laughs> picking apart everybody else, this sucks and it's going back. And you can't add oil to it, it'll break it apart. So I'm not quite sure how we would remedy this because Wayne Goss's answer to everything is usually add a couple of drops of your oil to it, neroli oil or olive oil or coconut oil or something, and it, nothing helps with this. Uh, well moisturized face, exfoliated, I mean, I tried, I really did. I tried using the Beauty Blender with it. I tried using the Buffing Artiste brush. I tried my fingers. I tried with a primer, without a primer. This stuff sucks. Absolutely don't waste your money on it. And it was like $46. So, Paula's Choice. <laughs> anyway. Um, <clears throat> this was another fail. And this is... Uh, Physicians Formula. This is new from them, and I think it's only a fail because this is the lightest shade they have, and it's dark brown, and it just looks horrible on me. And on the other end is a what they call a under eye lift pencil, and what that is is of course it's a little shimmery pencil they want to put under. You want to put it right underneath your your eyebrow to add a little bit of add a little bit of lift and the theory of it is nice except it is extremely glittery I'm like what are they thinking it's all glitter and it just makes you look like you have eye wrinkles underneath your your brows <laughs> so um, yeah this end was and it was fibery too and I thought oh it'll be like that fiber stuff that I just got but look at that color it's supposed to be blonde way too dark way too dark so <clears throat> it didn't work for me it didn't hold and that um, terrible terrible eye crayon on the other end is not good at all especially if you're older you don't want glitter <laughs> onto your eyebrows so anyway that's that one that's going back from the event at 
Jane Iredale, I did find a few things I really liked. And one of them is the Pure Pressed. Uh, this is her foundation in Radiant, I believe it is. And this runs around $42. It is a powder foundation. I did use this the day after I did the Derma Roller. And how did everybody do with their Derma Rollers? <laughs> I found the next day, um, I my face was still red and a little sensitive. I used this makeup and all the rest of my regular makeup. I had no trouble. When I tried using the next day, I tried using a liquid makeup and it looked so patchy. It looked terrible. And I could see little pinholes in my chin. I could see that they almost look like blackheads. They were tiny little pinholes. So I know that I did penetrate the skin with that derma roller thing. Um, my next derma roll is coming up next weekend. I'm doing it Friday nights and sleeping on it afterwards. I'm not going to be putting makeup or anything on afterwards. I'm just going to do the moisturizing face mask and then I'm sleeping on it overnight and Saturday morning when I get up then I'll start my normal routine but I will use a powder mineral foundation and this one is quite nice from Jane Iredale. Slightly less money. I think it's about ten dollars less. This is the Pure uh, Minerals Cosmetic line and they have the closest thing to the Jane Iredale um, and this is beautiful packaging right now at Ulta. This is on sale for $29. Um, this is a beautiful um, powder makeup as well. I couldn't tell the difference when I did them side by side. They are pretty much identical. This color is light from Pure Cosmetics and I love the packaging. Isn't that pretty? Uh, Hard Candy had <clears throat> a couple of things that they came out with that I really liked and this was the lip primer and one end is creamy which is just a cream that you put on your lips um, kind of like a lip balm or something like that the other side is glossy and you put that over the top of your lipstick before you put your lip gloss on it's supposed to hold your lip gloss on uh, for a little bit of time I do like this and I do think they work really well I really love this False Lash Mascara from Essence and it was almost a holy grail. And then we had a hot um, day at work. We had uh, unusually warm weather. The heat was on at work. I was sweating and here, lo and behold, were all these dings above my eye and it was from this. This makes beautiful big spidery leg lashes. Um, they melt in the heat or sweating so unfortunately it's just not it doesn't if it doesn't pass that test at work because I don't like to touch up my makeup at work except maybe put lipstick on at lunchtime I don't mess around with my makeup at work and I don't like to keep looking in the mirror to see if there's dings on the upper part of my lid from the lashes being so long they're slamming up against my my lid here and they were leaving all these little dots and it did flake also at the end of the day so nope it's it's not going to make it it's a beautiful mascara when you first put it on you think oh my god this is great but after a few hours not so great so save your money girls and guys I went in to get my hair cut and this is actually I I haven't um, hot roller did I was going to give it a day off actually this is my uh, hair. Anyway, she was doing a makeover on the lady who was in front of me. And she used Fiona Styles, and this is a lip crayon. It's called Color Impact Satin Lip Crayon. And this color is called Hester. And I thought it was gorgeous. So it is gorgeous. And she said that she loves the lasting power of this, and she uses it on her clients. So I'm just going to show you this color. Okay, I make kind of a lip print so you can see it. It's very pretty. Let's see if I can put it on. It's just a beautiful um, lip crayon. And it's a natural finish. It looks really nice at work. I like this very much from Fiona Styles. 
and uh, I wasn't a fan of a lot of the products in her line. I had tried many of them before, but I do like this, and this is the crayon in Hester. Uh, Ulta always has their little sale rack. This is Frostbite from China Glaze, really beautiful blue. Um, I wore this a lot over the winter time. Now I had a bit of a change of heart about this fiber business. This is the um, Cherry Blooms uh, Fiber Brows. I don't know if you can see the, how, how much is out of this, but I've used this several times. I love the idea of the stencil and doing the uh, brow stuff over the stencil. You can do this stencil with any product. I tried it with the gel, I tried it with eyeshadow, and I tried it with my other sticks even. And you can use the stencils. But the fiber brow itself, it's only, it's almost $50. And um, Glitzy Fritzy, when I first did my, my review of this, and I really liked it, it impressed me because it, it went on, it stayed on all day, it didn't move. Um, she wrote and she said, I must be the only one that doesn't like this stuff because it gets all over the place. And it, she's right. When you pull this out of, the, out of the thing, these little fibers go all over your makeup table. And if you're using the stencil and pressing down, it does make a nice shape. But they, they have a tendency not to, um, not to stay when you're putting them on. You can, you can actually have to kind of put a lot of product on to make one brow. So I'm changing my mind on this and I'm not going to recommend it, but I do like the stencils. But I think KISS or somebody has eyebrow stencils that you can probably do the same thing with. And to me, this is not worth almost $50. So um, the Cherry Blooms uh, Fiber Brows, they worked nicely for me. I think they're overpriced for what they are, but the stencil's dynamite. Okay, let's discuss this mascara. This is from Besame, and back in the old days, um, if you saw my special on Maybelline and the history of Maybelline, um, women used to put their mascara on with little brushes and cakes of hardened uh, coal dust or whatever, coal dust and Vaseline. Um, they used to mix a lot of dark things together and apply them with a little brush and they'd keep them in little containers. Um, or this is like a little block of stuff. Obviously not the same stuff they used in the 1930s, but Besame, she's an Argentinian, I believe, um, lady who created a makeup line <clears throat> based on old-fashioned makeup, but with modern formulas. And the colors and everything else are from the past. She has them right up, to, I think, to the 1970s. And I love her stuff. I love the powders. I love the lip stuff I tried. And I love this mascara. I was so surprised. Now this looks like a block of dark chocolate or something. Um, and it's an awkward vessel to work with, believe me. I basically take this and I spray it onto the top of that thing. And they give you this little like miniature toothbrush to wipe back and forth onto the block and you're pulling out product, and it's basically a solid mascara. And the stuff you have in the tube, that was invented, I think it was, was it Coco Chanel or Estee Lauder that invented the tube mascara back in the 1950s? Um, so that hasn't been with us for very long. This is how women put their mascara on. So this is a new formulation with modern products. You basically put it on the brush, and then you can brush it up, and it makes long, big old honking lashes. It doesn't smear, it doesn't leave dings, it's gorgeous. I was so surprised. This, however, it's kind of like when you're having a tea party with your granddaughter and you've got these tiny little cups and you pretend to drink the tea. To me, that's what this is, this tiny little baby <laughs> mascara thing. So what I did was I got some, you can get these mascara wands in the, um, in the drugstore. They have them over there where they have the nail files and things like that. And you just take one of these out and do the same thing. But you have a regular size. Boy, this is packaged so that nobody rips it off, huh? So you, you've got like a regular size wand. So 
just spray a little because you don't want it to be too watery. They don't want you to get it too watery. And then I just dance this around the top of that. And then you just put it on your eyes and you've got like a normal mascara. Now after you're finished doing your mascara, wash the heck out of this. I use a little bit of um, Dawn dishwashing detergent or uh, hand soap or baby shampoo. So it works really well with these little wands that you can buy and they're very cheap and they're reusable. You can keep using them. And this dries down. I like to spray this stuff with alcohol once a week. Um, I have been using it a lot and I think it's fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. It comes like this, but a great thing for travel. Um, you don't have to worry about the mascara tube thing in line when you're, you know, the terrorist checks in the airports. They take people's mascaras. I don't know if you knew that. Um, so this will alleviate that. This is great for travel. Um, yeah, you can use this. It works fine. It's just, I think, using a mascara brush that's got a longer handle and you're more familiar with, it, it goes beautifully. It's a beautiful formulation. And they've just kind of not mixed in the liquid with it. So this will last a lot longer. This is much more hygienic than doing something out of a tube. So I totally recommend uh, the Besame Mascara. And it, it was a, such a surprise this month because, you know, yeah. And the packaging is just so cute. Oh. Okay. I'm going to have mascara everywhere. <laughs> I always go around with a Q-tip and a 5x or 7x or 10x mirror to, to check after I do any mascara, actually, because it can really blend in with your eyes and you won't see it till you get one of those mirrors close up. So check it in the mirror. Let me take this lipstick off my hand. It looks like I have a wound. <laughs> Yes to cucumbers, the mask. No to cucumbers, the mask. And I bought three of these. It actually did nothing. It was so blah. I just felt like I wasted my money, so I don't recommend that. Just the mask. Everything else seemed to work fine. Oh, also at the Jane Iredell uh, event that I went to, I got this eyebrow pencil. And, you know, eyebrow pencils aren't so unique, but this color is. This is a true, true blonde color. It is so hard to find a color that looks blonde enough. You know, I really like it a lot. It doesn't make your eyebrows too dark when you're blonde. And a lot of them do. The taupes can make your eyebrows stand out like Joan Crawford. And that's not always a great look for everybody. It wasn't even a great look for her. <laughs> um, yeah, I love this color, and it's the blonde, and it's the only blonde color I've been able to find in eye pencils that I really think matches my hair. So this was a great find from Jane Iron. This is called Sweet Rose, and this is from Ulta, Ulta's own brand. And it's a very nice lip oil. I put it on first, and then I put all my other stuff on, my other makeup, and I, I always do my lipstick last. So by that time, I then blot the oil and then I put my lip products on. So I do like this. I think it's really nice. As far as lip oils go, I know I've got one from Burt's Bees and I have one from Physicians Formula. Everybody's getting in. I think Milani put one out too. And I, when I tried that, I wasn't all that crazy about it. So uh, lip oils, the newest thing here. There's always something, right, every year. Uh, bad from Jane Iredell. Uh, the lip glosses are gloppy. They're sticky gloppy. This is Beach Plum, and I, I love the color. I thought it was just gorgeous. A gorgeous color. This is the color. And it looks beautiful on the lips. And it never dries. It, ne it just, I feel like I've got, I don't know, maple syrup on my lips when I have this. So unfortunately, the Jane Iredell, um, lip gloss did not work for me okay last week we did this together i got a derma roller and this is a 0.5 millimeter let me just show you close up oh, you can see it's um 540 miniature needles, stainless steel or titanium, depending on which one you get. 
and you roll it over your face. And I had done a whole tutorial and explained about it. I got a lot of feedback from that. Um, some of you veteran rollers let me know that my face wasn't quite red enough, so I definitely have to apply more pressure than I was. Um, I was erring on the side of caution. So the second roll that I do next week, I think it's the third, uh, March 3rd, uh, I'm gonna go a little bit harder. I'm gonna press a little bit harder. Um, because the lady who I watched demonstrate this, she suggested you get lidocaine with it. And this is allocaine, which you can find in the burn section, in the first aid section. You don't want a lidocaine that has menthol with it. You want a lidocaine that is like for burn relief and stuff. Um, what this is, is a face numbing agent. You put this over your face like a face cream in any of the areas that you're going to be uh, derma rolling on. You let it sit there for 20 minutes. Then you wipe it off and then you do your derma rolling. And supposedly it numbs the surface of your skin so you don't feel the needles penetrating. Um, they said with a 0.5 needle, which this is quite short, that you wouldn't need this kind of thing. But if I apply more pressure than I did last week, I don't know, I may try. Do you guys want me to demonstrate this as well? I mean, I'll demonstrate, I'll, I'll put it on my face and then 20 minutes later I'll start the filming up again. But allocane was really good. This stuff is kind of expensive. Uh, this is what tattoo artists use before they needle you. I wish mine had used it before he needled me. Jeez, I, we, I didn't get any of this stuff. I took it like a man, you know. <laughs> yeah, allocane, um, lidocaine it's called. Wet n Wild did some great lip products with this new line that they have, and I think it, again, I, I'm not sure if it's limited edition. This is the Catsuit Liquid Lips. Ink Really Hard and Coral Corruption are the two colors I love in this. The Pale Nude is a nasty color. It's already on sale at my Walgreens locally, so other people must have complained and returned it because it looks... It looks like death, really bad. <laughs> but these two are great, and it's their liquid lips, uh, liquid lipsticks from Wet n Wild. They're only about four ninety nine. Let me just give you a swipe of each of these so you can see them side by side. There's a pink and a coral. So pink coral. They last quite a while. My favorite in the lip line from the Photo Focus edition. These are the. Um, the gel bombs. I think I have love and play. Love and play. Love is a good all-purpose, um, it looks good on everybody pink, and it's a bomb and you can feel the hydration when you put this on. And play is kind of your brighter, kind of corally, uh, warmer toned pink. So this is quite nice. It's not as strong a neon color as it is in the tube. Um, I'd recommend both of these. I think they're both wonderful. I think they're $2.99. Um, I was going to do a Favorite Foundations BB Cream CC Cream uh, special, and I, again, I wanted to buy some things so that I could compare with some high ends that are popular. And I think Laura Shake Up Makeup was talking about this recently, and it brought it to mind because it used to be one of my favorites. This is the Bobbi Brown BB Cream. And this particular color is fair, and this is the third from the lightest. There's the light one, uh, kind of a another light one, and then there's this one. So the, she's got a lot of shades, and she's famous for that. This one is a slightly warm tone. I was a little surprised because I thought it was going to be more neutral. And it blends like a dream. It's got that SPF smell to it, you know, the suntan lotion smell, uh, because it does have a lot of uh, titanium dioxide, I think, in it, which the idea of the beauty cream is that it has SPF in it. It's medicinal. Now, you're not supposed to use a primer underneath uh, BB creams. I don't know if you knew that. Um, because they are a skin treatment. Uh, you're supposed to put them immediately onto your skin. You can moisturize and then put this BB cream on your skin and don't use a primer in between. It actually, it can distort the effectiveness of the SPF and this is an SPF 35. Um, I think out of this one, comparing it with the IT Cosmetics, I actually prefer the IT Cosmetics. It's got a 50 SPF 
and I think the blendability of that, uh, the coverage is just a little bit better than the Bobbi Browns, and the Bobbi Browns uh, a little more expensive. So, um, jury's still out on this. I mean, I use it, you can always use it underneath another makeup, but if you're spending this much money on makeup, uh, you want it to, to be good on its own, you know. So, speaking of SPF, um, if you have, I don't like to put a lot of skincare in my foundation. I think that your skincare should be your skincare, and then your foundation is kind of a nice coating. I, I don't, I don't understand people are getting skin care that will exfoliate their skin or, you know, add nutrients or whatever. It's like, oh, I get my, my skin care does all that. Uh, but sometimes I notice that my foundations don't have SPF in them. So I put it in with my primer, depending on what I'm using. Uh, this is the Supergroup sunscreen, and I believe this is SPF 50. It's one of the few that you can use... Um, under your makeup and it doesn't disturb the delicate balance of your makeup. It's very, very light cream. Yeah, you do get a little bit of that scent, but it's more of the scent uh, like in IT Cosmetics uh, CC Cream than the SPF of a suntan lotion. So it's more of that kind of a scent. So it's more of a, a citrus kind of a scent. Uh, I do like this very much. Uh, I don't talk about SPF very much. <clears throat> but it is very important. There's only two more items. <laughs> also for my birthday, my husband's gift certificate bought me this. This is the Essential Rose Skin Trio from Sephora. And it includes a sleeping mask, rose scented wipes, and a rose mask that I'm going to use um, after this week's um, ro derma rolling. So I love the smell of roses, and this, all these things were. It was ten dollars for everything. But I like to try this mask and the sleeping mask. I love the idea of that. Um, and the wipes are great. How many wipes are in there? Twenty-five wipes in here. So that's great. You know, on those nights when you're staggering off to bed, you're exhausted. You don't want to stop and wash your face or whatever. I have nights like that once in a while. <laughs> you just grab one of these wipes, just throw some water on your face, grab these wipes, put it on, and rinse it off, and go to bed. It's You don't have to go through your whole routine every night. And you, we, we are human sometimes, we just don't feel like it. But this is a nice alternative. Speaking of Sephora, uh, these were in their sales section. I think they're on sale for $11 or something. They're duo-sided blushes and they have them in a, a series of colors. There's lots of pigmentation here. And this is the color. You've got the deeper matte shade for the blush and then you've got the shiny highlight that you can add to uh, the top of your cheek. So I've got that on now. Uh, it's really nice. Really nice. Yeah, let's put that on there. These lights are bright, so you don't see the redness. Like A lot of people didn't see how red my face got after the derma rolling, and I'm like, wow, my face is so red. <laughs> it really was. But the lights are so bright, um, it kind of washes it out, so you didn't know how, how bright it was. We tend to wear a lot more makeup um, on camera because of that, and then we go off in our regular life, and we look like, here come the clowns, Judy Collins, hello. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a wonderful week, and thank you again for all your comments. I really appreciate it, even the constructive criticism. Uh, some of you veteran rollers wanted to make sure I knew that I had done something incorrectly, and I hadn't rolled hard enough, and I uh, avoided the lip area. Um, and one person said they do five passes, not four. But I think that's all... I researched everything and I did it the way the doctor said to do it, so I'd rather do the caution side. I'd rather take that side. So anyway, I'm going to um, hot roll my hair and get it straightened out here. I just wanted to air dry it for once. This is my, my natural hair once again. It's natural wavy now. It used to be dead straight. So. Um, thank you for the birthday wishes. That was great. I had a, a wonderful time. Uh, 59 sucks. Um, no, it doesn't. I should be grateful that I made it here. It just seems 
like the number itself seems really high. I don't know. I'm going through that. It's the nines. 39, 49, and 59. And 29 especially was horrible for me. But 59, yeah, this one's, this one's big. But I'm not going to be miserable all year. I mean, come on, you know. And there's folks out there who are a little older than me that are going, eh, you know, <laughs> who cares? You know, just be happy that you're healthy, you have a loving relationship, you have good friends, you know, you have a job. So why am I being so morose, okay? Anyway, everybody have a wonderful week. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.